wow, this is becoming really interesting. Uh, this is like the 80th whatever take of this video, and it occurred to me that not once have I actually turned off the debugger inside of Visual Studio. And most of the time, I don't even stop playing. Anyway, the key of this video is to show that we can use singletons inside of our Unity, uh, inside of our Unity game, and support Unity's recompile and continue playing feature. And it's really easy. There's, there's no complicated architecture to do, just a couple extra lines that you would probably be adding in anyway, just in a slightly different place, when you're trying to use singleton patterns. So I'm going to quickly go over this code, how you get through it, get the up and running so you can see it, and then I'm going to go into some extra notes that I've learned along the way so you can see some of the things that might or might not cause issues in your code. Okay, so to dive in, I've got this very simple project, and I figured I'd also show this code that uh, inside of here, it's, it's just hooked up to it. The debugger's constantly there. Okay, so inside of this, if I select this cube, which here's the cube, it has a script score clicker C. If I click on it, I get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and it adds 5 every single time I click on it. And that makes sense because it's 5 points per click. Now, if I go into this code, we're going to see that it references score manager. It references it by the class name, and then it gets the instance, a static, a public static field inside of it called instance that is an instance of score manager. Now, and once it has that, it calls the add score function. So that works. We expect singletons to work by default. We don't expect them to work. What I've shown before is that any of your static variables are lost when you do a recompile and continue and neither start nor awake get triggered again when you go through that. So how does it work? Well, first of all, let's make sure that it does work. If I save this after having put in a second line, so instead of adding five, it'll add five twice, so it's adding 10. I save this and return to Unity. It figured out there was a change in the code, it's recompiling, and it's happy with it. No errors here. Well, it's got five warnings. Interesting. Oh, well, that does not matter at the moment. So in this case, I click the cube, and now we're going up by 10, 90, 100, 110, etc. It goes up by 10 every time. So that change worked. The static instance worked. Our <laughs> our singleton pattern worked. I'm going to get rid of that, save it, and then let's go take a look at our instance and see how it's set up. This is it. You put on your mono behavior a, an interface. You put an interface on it, and you, it's the iSerialization callback receiver. That's part of Unity Engine. It's just built into the system. That gives you a couple of functions. One of them is on after deserialize. Normally, when you're setting an instance, you're going to be doing that in the awake function or the start function. Instead of putting it in the awake function, you put it in on after deserialize. Here's the interesting part, or another really interesting part, because that, that right there, there's your solution. It works, period. Um, on after deserialize will trigger every time before an awake function goes. So as soon as the object is first loading, you first loading your scene, it's got the object sitting there, or you instantiate a prefab. Before the awake function gets triggered, it calls on after deserialize because it constructs the object in memory, but creates a new instance of it, and then it deserializes the data over it. So when it deserializes that data, it calls this function once that's complete and says instance equals this. We say instance equals this. So great, that happens. We guarantee that it starts at the beginning of the game. Awesome. Great. Also, after you recompile and continue, what's actually happening there is that it builds their code. It checks to see, can I build the code? If it does, if it works, or if it didn't work, it just fails, give you the errors, but it still keeps the old copy of everything in memory. It didn't change anything out. This function does not get called then. It does trigger, but if the code did compile correctly and it realizes you now have a new assembly, it will take all of the game objects that you have in there right now, it will serialize them all, store that in memory somewhere, get rid of the assembly 
take wipe out all of the objects it had created with it and then it's going to load in the new assembly that you just built or that it just built recreate all those objects and then deserialize all of the data back into it so all of your objects come back all of the state comes back but it's with the new code so your your serialization is really powerful here it's very fast um, and that's one of the reasons why Unity uses their own, because they made a very, very fast one that works very quickly and effectively inside of their memory system for using this. Um, now, that's supporting it. Now, there's a couple things to understand here. Um, inside of the IDE, this function is going to get called almost as many times as your FPS gets called, uh, as your FPS. Um, when you're inside the editor and you have the object selected. If it's showing up in the inspector, the inspector is triggering that change, that deserialization change, where it detects changes, it's saving it, it's showing them back up. So it takes the data and it deserializes it back. So it's going to execute it more times in your editor. So you don't want this to be any complex behavior. If you're doing something where it's checking a database connection and reproducing that database connection every single time, this is a horrible spot to do that. In fact, let me show you inside the code on after deserialize. Um, let's see, I will show you here. I think it'll work on this one. Oh yeah, it's already connected on after deserialize. Oh wait, I don't think it's on after deserialize that that's triggering. Well, whatever. Yeah, there it is. Continue. Go back into Unity. Now let's go over to the score manager. So we're here with the score manager. Yeah, it's not the on after deserialize that that was happening. It's on the on before serialize. I could put some code in there, but I'm not going to right now. Instead, I'm going to go use the serialization callback receiver and put it here. So on before serialize. This is Unity's own example of the code. Um, so taken from iSerialization callback receiver, and there's a slight modification in here, but it still does the same thing effectively. Uh, so I've got that in there, and it's not looping over and over again. But if I go back into here and I select the item that has it, so I selected main camera, which happens to be where I have this mono behavior sitting. Um, now we see it go, triggers the on before serialization script. F and I hit F5 to let it continue, 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 over and over and over again. You can see that is triggering over and over and over again. I hit, click, click continue many, many, many times, and it just keeps triggering this one. That is simply because of the up, oops, continue. That is simply because of the updates of when it is updating inside of here. This is triggering a regular refresh. So throughout the game, as the game is processing, these data fields get updated alongside it. That's useful. OK, so we're taking the data, putting it back into here. Now, there is another issue that was happening inside of this. On before serialization, you have access to certain things. There, there's another class that I was producing alongside here, a control A, K, U. That's control A to select all, control K, U to control code uncomment. So anything in the selection was then uncommented. So this is an interesting thing that I had run before, but uh, during the on after deserialize, I had tried a setup where I went through every instance of every game object um, and tried to find all the instances of iStatic resettable and just execute them because I didn't need to store a list of them. I just needed to call them and let them know that they need to reset their, their uh, uh, statics, their singletons. So that's what I was my initial approach to this. Now the problem was is that anything inside of here for being able to try to access other objects in the scene does not work. It does not work, not unless it's already stored in variables somewhere. So you had to store the information there. Because scene manager dot find in scene um, does not work. You can't get other objects then. The find object game object dot find objects of type does not work. You cannot do it. So they specifically, if you execute them during this, it specifically calls out that you cannot operate them during the on after deserialize event. 
I don't know exactly why. I think, I'm not entirely certain, but I think that the on after deserialize is isolated to per object. It's not like uh, the awake and then start and then update, where that is a, all of the game objects get it fired for the awake and then for this, they all get the start function fired and then they all get the update function fired in sequence. Uh, in this case, I think this gets called immediately on the object, and that's one of the reasons why, because this one has deserialized, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that anything else has. So you can only access the items inside of here. Okay. Anyway, so that didn't work. I couldn't access other objects in the scene. I couldn't call them. I couldn't set them. So this method did not work. I had to have something in the on before serialization. Now, I uncommented this, and I'm going to show you one of the initial problems that I found in here, uh, where this becomes an ex where this becomes a real problem. My initial approach when I wasn't using the iSerialization callback re receiver, I was using iResettable iStatic resettable C control dot. Oh, well, what is this? Reset reset statics. It has a function there called reset statics. So I just changed it, this to do that one instead. My code is still running. So I'm just going to save that and go return to Unity. Where's Unity? There it is. OK. Oh, uh, one more thing that I wanted to do on this one. Uh, let's see. That's score manager C, uh, static resettable. We've got static reset. Um, yeah, so I have this field. This field is private, so it doesn't show. And I have it serialized, which can then make it show. So I still put it hide in inspector because this is not something I want a designer to come in, look at, and think that they can manipulate it or edit it or work with it. So I just keep the field hidden away. Now I go back into here, inside of this, and let's select the object that has it, this iStatic resettable C. There it is. And by the way, keep in mind, I've just made significant changes to the architecture here. And my code is still running. Now, it's got an error in here. Let's see what that is. I'm going to get rid of this one and see this one. Cast, specify cast is not valid. Uh, that one, let's see if it's still doing that. Um, I serialization callback receiver. Oh, here. Uh, score manager C, it's got the I static resettables. Okay, this sh that should be old code, clear. To validate that, I'm going to go over here into score clicker and we're going to guarantee this. Control C, V, V, S. And I should not see that triggered again after this. So, okay, good. I didn't get that error again when I came back. Okay, now everything looks great. It looks like it's working awesome in here. We've got our references, so we make our changes. I'm able to make this work using that method, where I, I use my project, my own architectural class to support this. But what happens when we get rid of hide in inspector? Where is that? Save. Let's go back into Unity now. What is this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is a funny part. So this is continuously growing over and over and over again. And at some points when it transfers over from the uh, from the on before serialized to the on after deserialized, it actually carries that data into it. When it's generating data this way, for some strange reason, when it gen generates that in the editor, um, when it goes back into the actual gameplay, when you stop the game and start the game again, even though the editor has been gathering this data and serializing it, it doesn't seem to carry it into the game, which is a little bit weird. I'm not exactly sure what's happening there yet. But we can see that this is growing and it's slowing down. It's slowing down because this list has more and more stuff that it's been growing and getting. Now, right now, I can see this field. I can see this value inside of here. And that number just keeps growing and changing and increasing the whole time. So this has been slowing down. Originally, we got to the first thousand in like the first three or four seconds. And now it takes three or four seconds just to get to 100. 
Okay, so this is definitely a problem, especially when you consider the original architecture that I had on that, how this field was hide in inspector, that a default operation format that you might use for this is that you hide the data from the inspector because you don't need it to be seen. So that means that this gigantic list is continuously growing the entire time that you are running your editor, and it will get slower and slower and slower, at least while that object is selected. So it's something that will show up and your ed editor will start acting weird and getting slow and sluggish and you won't understand why. And it's going to be frustrating and trying to resolve and figure that out. There's nothing obvious about why that is happening. So you really want to be careful with this. You really want to be careful with how you are doing this, where you are storing your data. So I'm going AKC. I'm removing it from this system and I'm going back to score manager C and let's undo this one. On after deserialization, I put it back to the old format. I just changed my architecture on how I'm supporting these things. I just changed my architecture. I'm going back into Unity and I'm clicking on this and it's working. It's working. I don't have that infinite loop here. The code works, it does everything it's supposed to do. It's supporting the code changes, architecture changes happen on the fly, and I have not once stopped the code or stopped debug debugging. Continuously. I am continuously adding new things, doing new things, constructing new things. Um, now, of course, the big thing on this one is that while you're doing it in this mode, if you make changes to your scene, those changes are lost. So if you're editing in this mode, your changes have just been lost. Honestly, <laughs> the upgrade that I think this one really needs is that you can right click on an object or right click on one of these, go to the component set and say, store back to the original. And then when you stop your game, the settings that are in there will get saved back to the instance of that object inside of your scene. If that feature were there, that would be incredible. I think that would be the icing on the cake for this architecture and be everything that we need it to be. Because if we're making manual changes to this, sometimes we want those changes to be stored and we should be able to just re-serialize that, put that data back. So I think that's gonna be the focus of my next video to see about getting that key functionality to work. And if I can get that to work, I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be sticking with this this is going to be the route that I take. Okay, um, those are the key things in here. Um, that's that's some of the key stuff happening. Uh, I hope this has been useful. If you want to see more topics on this area, um, I'm planning on continuing this route because I'm planning on continuing this, but I'm only planning on hitting the architectures I primarily use, um, which I used to hate singletons, but I'm back to them now. Um, I was using locator, but I'm going back to singletons. And I have some ideas on how I'm going to handle the unit test automation and keep it really clean. Um, so that's one of the key reasons why, single, why singletons are not generally supported or liked in, that, in uh, testing. The testing is one of the big reasons why. Uh, so I plan on taking care of that. Now, of course, that also means that if you have multiple projects going off of the same DLLs, that singletons are a terrible idea there. Um, or they could be. There, there's a reason why you could. I'll, I'll cover it in some future videos on this. Anyway, I hope you found it valuable. Please comment down below, like this, subscribe to the list, get alerts. Um, these are all things where I'm going to continue this chain of thoughts and hopefully we end up getting some really awesome architecture at the end.